Oh my hey. gosh. Hi. Oh, hey. What I'm you really doing? Ty- I'm so tired. I'm also so tired. I'm so tired. Mercury's in retrograde right now. We had that blood moon. The sun is trying to something or another. Oh my gosh. It is so hot here already. It is. Dude, it's not much better here. It's, no way. Are you ready for this? 94 degrees in New York. Oh. <gasps> And no. guess whose dumbass doesn't own an air conditioner? Oh no, oh no, 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 no. That's too hot for New York. I don't understand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you live yeah. on the it East was, Coast. It was like 60 degrees three days ago. Not even three days, yesterday. It was 60 degrees yesterday. There was a how low long, of 53. Why? How long Why? is it supposed to be in the 90s? I don't know. I hope not long. And then oh, don't worry, no. I'm going to make it worse and uh, come to Arizona. But the, the good news is I get to see you. <laughs> I'm so, I know, I'm so <laughs> excited that you're coming. I'm so excited that I the see you. The like... hour starts at four. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yes. You know we'll be there. <laughs> yeah. It's an open bar. <laughs> I still need to get my dress. Oh my but God. it's fine. I'll find I don't even one. know if mine is going to show up on time. Not oh, a clue. No. Are you Not shipping it here? Yeah, I shipped it to my stepdad's office because apparently everyone's stealing packages at the house. Oh, like, good. Cool, 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 cool. Yep, yep. Love mm-hmm. this journey. Yep. Also, we, uh, there is so much vocal fry today. Oh, I know. I apologize. I drank oh too many God. beers last night and I didn't even drink. Just I my voice. drank in like a week. You're tired. I'm hungover. Teach, you know. Okay, I did teach a really fun class yesterday for Mental Health Awareness Month, because it's May when we're recording this, but, um, so I taught my Bad Breakup mixtape, uh, which really is just, Alyssa got permission to yell curse words at other people during class, <laughs> which was very cathartic for me. I like this. Yeah, this is good. It's a good journey. But also, now I'm just very tired. Yeah, I and know. my voice is tired, because I was yelling, because I blasted the music, because it was just so fun. That's fun though. That's good. I'm just slightly hungover. I didn't really have that much to drink. And I, we left at like, okay, granted we were there at like 5.30. We got there at like 5, 5.30 for like happy hour. And then um, left at like 10. So we were out for like, you know, a good five hours, but I'm just, I'm just like old now and my body can't handle it. I didn't sleep. And then my nest isn't like hooked up to my phone, so I couldn't turn down the air from my bed. I know these wow. are first world problems. It was like hot and I couldn't sleep. And oh, now I'm just, this is just the state we're in today. <laughs> oh man, we're just in such a positive mood. <laughs> you know, yeah, we are in a positive mood. Well, friends, welcome to the Modern Singer Podcast. <laughs> My name is Ellen. And my name is Alyssa. And oh man, being an adult. What were those words? I don't know. Being an adult is hard. Being an adult. Just just being an adult. How are you though? How is everything? I'm good. I'm okay. You know, we're, what are we doing? More house projects. Shocking. I know everyone's so shocked. We're doing countertops. Mm. but, But we have to take Okay, very long, convoluted story packed into a shorter story. We are keeping our cabinets because, like, doing kitchen, doing any renovations is like 10 times more expensive than you think. But doing your kitchen, we, we got a quote for like refacing the cabinets. I have like a normal size kitchen. Okay, it's not like a massive, there's not an island or anything. It's just like a normal kitchen. Refacing the cabinets and new countertops from this other place was like 40 grand. I thought that's like what a, yeah. I thought that's like what a new kitchen cost. So we're keeping our- more than a new kitchen. I just, I don't even know. Everything is just expensive now. So we got new countertops, but we want to keep the cabinets. So we're ripping up the countertops ourselves so that the cabinets don't get messed up. But that's just, you know, a lot harder than you think it would be. So so we've ripped up like- a tiny strip, and then we're like, yeah, that was good, success, success for the day. So that's kind of just what I've been doing. What have you been up to? Um, I got a new bin from my worms. <laughs> <laughs> Did they, they outgrow, they outgrow their, their old, old bin? Yeah, so now I have two. 
this one has a tray system that I'm oh. trying out. Okay. Uh, which is really fun. But I thought that like a majority of their old bin would fit in there. Not even close? Not even a little bit. Not even a quarter. Wow. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It was just so compacted and I had no idea. <laughs> so that's fun. But in other fun news, I also bought a micro shredder. Uh, oh. Because I wanted a new toy to go with it. So now yeah. I started shredding all of my junk mail. That's perfect. And just tossing it in. I love that. Oh my gosh. I love it. And it's then like today I also shredded, uh, I go puffed before we started recording because I needed a snack and I, uh, got some pizza rolls and I shredded that box. And it was so much <laughs> Just fun. what kales can you shred for your, for your I love wormy. shredders. They're so cool. That's cool. No, that's cool. It's like a double, double whammy, you know, double dip. You get to Keep all your, you know, shred your stuff. Nobody can Shredding steal your so identity. Yeah, and shredding. then you get to put it into the worm use. Who yeah. need also, it? Also, when so. I was opening up my spam mail today, um, one of them just had a two dollar bill in it. What? Yeah, Wait. I'm glad I opened it. Like an actual two dollar bill? Yeah, I got two dollars. <laughs> two cents, two dollar bills. Wait, I'm sorry. Columbia where? University, where I did not go. <laughs> They just sent you a two dollar bill like randomly. Yeah, well, I mean, I think it was in partnership with. Um, they're trying to do some sort of survey, but it's for, um, like people who identify as Latinx. And I'm like, you have sent this to a, the wrong department. <laughs> you have missed I don't the mark, think my friend. You know who you're talking to. Just because I live in the Heights, doesn't mean I am not very very white. <laughs> this is like. There's so many layers of weirdness in that. Yeah. Like, wh what? I hey, two other bills are cool, idea. though. Yeah, and I think the other fun thing that I started doing is I started working with Annalisa Lemming. I know I, like, teased it last time. <gasps> Yay! I I'm um, so excited. On the paradox process, and we started working on... Um, so basically how I've been describing it to people who don't really know paradox is it's kind of like CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, but it is through the lens of other performers, which has oh, nice. been really, really cool. And I've started noticing myself, um, changing some of my behaviors during like my every day. And that's really cool. That's really, really cool. And that's yeah. kind of what we're talking about today, right? Exactly. So because not only am I working on that, I'm also working on music. So that's perfect, because today we're gonna chat about questions to ask when you're looking for a new vocal coach or voice teacher. Finding the right teacher is super important, and sometimes, hold on, what was, I? okay, so Alyssa wrote these notes in 30 minutes. I love it, it's okay, I, I wrote my notes reference. like, in between meetings. It was great. I legitimately wrote them this morning because I fell asleep at 10 p.m. last night and I got home at 8 30. And the only reason it took me that long to fall asleep was because I had to eat food. But finding the right teacher is super, super important. And whether or not you're already working with someone, sometimes it's just time to grow with someone new. There's a lot of reasons that you might need to find a new teacher. Maybe you're graduating or you're relocating. Maybe you just need a different perspective. Maybe you're starting at a new school, an institution, or a summer program, or even a longer program. Sometimes you might have differing opinions on where you want your career to go than coaches or teachers want your career to go. And you always have the right to move your career however you want. It's your life. Sometimes there's a lack of communication or their availability changes, or maybe your availability has changed. And sometimes it's just nice to grow in a different way. Yeah, just make sure wherever you start to do your research beforehand. Make a list of everyone you think would be really good to study with, somebody that you've been thinking about. Maybe put it in a nice organized spreadsheet because we love spreadsheets. See if you have any friends or colleagues or anybody that knows any of their students or maybe was their students so you can ask them for their feedback how their teacher works 
Um, just make sure you get like the positive and the negative so you can kind of weigh your options. Just get as much information as possible. It'll be very helpful when making this decision. Do they specialize in any specific styles or techniques? Do they teach you how to access your belt or maybe even your whistle tone? Maybe it's your falsetto. Can they help you find your float? Can they break down the mechanics of these styles in a way that makes sense to you? How long have they been teaching? While some teachers are brand new, that doesn't always mean that they aren't good at what they do. Sometimes newer teachers can bring in a different perspective or style that may line up with your needs as a student. What do their performance careers look like? If they're constantly performing, that may be awesome if you're looking for some new connections and an every now and then kind of a lesson plan. But if you're looking for a weekly commitment, this may not be the teacher for you. If they're performing sometimes, it's still a great way to make new connections through them. And their name will definitely be known in audition rooms, but they're still available to you on a more consistent schedule. If they're never or rarely performing, there are a lot of things that might go into it. Are they retired, focusing more on their family, or even taking a break to focus on their health? These are all very healthy things to look for in a teacher. If they aren't performing because they aren't getting hired, COVID permitting, there may be something else to look at here. If they are performing, who do they study with and how often? Are they open to feedback in their craft like they're going to ask you to be? These are great steps to start figuring out who you want to work with and how often. Yeah, and not only who are they studying with, but who else have they taught? What kind of professional achievements are their current and former students having right now or recently? Why did their students leave their studio? Was it a, a toxic reason? Was it just because they outgrew them or moved states? Go online, go on YouTube and try to find videos of their students across like different ages and voice ranges. And a bonus, if you can find videos of them singing before working with that teacher that you want to work with, what's different about them? What, what's different in their voice? What's different in their performance? Just try to make those observations to see what kind of things they worked on with the teacher that you're trying to work with. And just remember, don't be judgmental. Just, you know, use this as a, a learning technique. We're all students at some point in time and no one is perfect. So make sure that you're not judging people who you've never met as well. That's yeah. something that is super important. What is their teaching philosophy? Usually you can find this on their website or in their bio listed in their school or institution's profile. Do you agree with what they have to say? And then ask yourself why or why not? Figure out what they stand for and see if it lines up with you. This is actually something that isn't talked about a lot, but is super, super important. You are so close with your voice teacher and they mold you as a human, as a performer. That is your, your job. You need to make sure that, that you align, you like them. <laughs> they are doing things that, that you like to do. Um, they stand for maybe the same things or, or maybe it's just that they don't stand for things that, that, you've, that you oppose. This is really, really important and something that just really isn't talked about. Another really important thing to consider is logistics. Does their schedule work with yours? Do they have background knowledge on kinds of music you wanna learn? Do they teach extended techniques you're interested in? If you're not in school, how much does that teacher charge? How often do they offer lessons and does their payment schedule work with yours? These are a few logistical things that you may wanna ask beforehand just to make sure that those aren't things that are gonna be a barrier. Just like any interview, you should bring a list of questions to ask them as well in this trial lesson. What's their teaching philosophy and has it changed over the years? What are their expectations for students? If they do keep track of their students, what are they up to? Do they teach other classes at the university or program? If so, what are they? Find out what their interests are. You never know what a good connection is gonna be. Be open-minded to any feedback that they might offer. Sometimes it can be a little hard to kind of grasp a new concept, or maybe they've just said something in a way that is a little jarring to how you usually take a voice lesson or coaching, and that's okay. Make sure that you take notes and record the session if you can so that you can refer to it later and take more notes. What? Notes, 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 notes. All notes. the notes. Da, 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 Take da. notes. Oh my Did gosh. we say notes? I don't know. Did we? <laughs> but whatever you do, make sure that you stay professional.
always. See if their teaching style matches up with your learning style. A few uh, different types of learning styles are kinesthetic, something that you need to feel, do it yourself, something. What is this? I don't know. You must touch larynx. You must <laughs> feel the larynx with your hands <laughs> and your emotions. No. <laughs> 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 That's what my teaching. Are we on? <laughs> I don't know. I love that we're like at the same level though. <laughs> Before we got I mean, on today, I was really worried that. Oh man. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> <laughs> A few styles of learning are kinesthetic, something you need to feel, do it yourself, feeling the vibrations, feeling the sound in your mask, oral, self explanatory, you need to hear it. Visual, another self-explanatory one. You need to see it written out. Maybe that's just the notes. Maybe that's um, the markings. Maybe that's your own markings, your squiggle, squiggle, which means, you know, higher, lift your soft palate, whatever that may be. Or cognitive, need to discuss it, understand the concept, having conversations with your coach, your teacher. How does your learning style, how does this knowledge of yourself line up with the styles of teaching? Do they offer multiple ways to gain knowledge on a subject? Do those make sense to you? Do they connect or is it just not working with you? Another important facet to pay attention to is how they give feedback. Do you feel supported and challenged? Amazing. Do you feel belittled and like you're not intelligent? Maybe evaluate the words and the ways they gave you feedback to see if it was a general lack of knowledge on a new subject or if they potentially even bullied you. Try to stay as objective as you can and know that not all teachers are created equal. And how do they challenge you and your beliefs? Your philosophies, positivity, self-talk, practice. Again, are you supported and are you challenged? Do you feel good about how you've progressed? Are you actually seeing results? And remember, it's okay to be uncomfortable. Sometimes lessons are uncomfortable. You're learning new things, you're trying out new things, this might be the early time that you're you're working with a new teacher or and coach. Maybe it's a 9 a.m. lesson. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you're trying to sing high notes at 9 a.m., whatever it may be. Just remember that it's okay to feel uncomfortable, but if you're leaving each lesson in tears or with low self-esteem or just feeling like crap all the time afterwards, it may be time to reevaluate your association with this teacher. And it's okay if it's not the right fit. Sometimes the timing doesn't work out from scheduling to costs. There are a lot of logistical things that may just not line up and that's totally fine. Even if it's your dream coach or teacher, their teaching style might not line up with what you need as a student. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so perfect. Oh, my heart. <laughs> Even if they're your dream coach or teacher, their teaching style might just not line up with what you need as a student. It's okay to need what you need as a student, so don't settle for something that could be detrimental to your own voice just because you want to work with a particular person. Sir! <laughs> it's staying. I don't care. It's staying. Meow. <laughs> Meow. Rotissima had something to say too. Fortissimo, come here. Come here. Do you want to come say hi before we sign off? Oh, mm, distinguished yes. gentleman, yes. No, he is not. He is a <laughs> But I did wake yeah. up to him. Um, he decided he was the little spoon this morning. Oh. Um, Do you see this? Oh, no. The he little just hugs. This man. I'm sorry I yelled at you. I love you so much. I just want to hug, Mom. Oh my goodness. I am obsessed with him. I would die for this cat. He's a baby. He's 12 and a half. He's still a baby. I know. I'm just a baby. I was just about to say. <laughs> oh, too many Instagram TikTok references. Oh, all of the TikToks. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. Are you interested in growing your singing career but not really sure where to start? Sign up for our newsletter to gain access to all of our freebies.
Ellen and I want to make sure that we can keep getting new information out to the singing community, but to do that, we need your help. If you want to help keep Modern Singer going, we would love your support. Even a dollar will help. You can donate to us on PayPal and through the drop a tip link on all of our platforms. Are you looking for the resources we mentioned today? Everything is linked in the show notes below. And if you want to show off your singer pride, check out our merch at modern-singer.com. And don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Bye. bye. What did you want to say bye? I want to know if he'll sniff the mic. I have no idea if there's cat ASMR going on, but uh, editing Alyssa is going to find out. We need a mic. Or a meow. <laughs> mic. We need a meow. <laughs> Not a mic. We need a meow. Okay. Can I get him the meow? Meow in the mic. So, no, mom, I already meowed. I already meowed, mom. <laughs> it's so nice. Fortissimo, you are so distracting, bug. <laughs> you need some down phrase, my friend. <laughs> I'm like, just, I'm hanging on by a thread. Me too. I'm hanging on just by <laughs> a tiny, tiny thread. <sighs> okay, <clears throat> here we go. Do they have background knowledge on kinds of musics you want to learn? <laughs> kind of musics. Do they have background <laughs> musics? <laughs> Lord. Fortissimo, I love you so much. Can you see his little face down here? Yeah, he's so cute. I love you. Jesus fucking Christ. We're going to do this down. today. I just can't do it today. My brain. I just, here we are. Okay, okay bye. That's the end of the episode. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> Done. Just, you know, figure it out. <laughs> oh my gosh. What are, where are their former students now? See if they keep track of them. What am I doing? Okay. I'm gonna turn <laughs> <seat over. laughs> that was I so good. I don't know. I was enjoying that. I was enjoying that. <laughs> the forest. <laughs> like what all of my little lean-ins. <laughs> <laughs> it just got like more and more intense. Like we were getting, it was good. I liked oh it. Oh my gosh. Okay. I was enjoying mm. it. Sorry, Forte was putting his face on, on my mic. Can you say it again? <laughs>